The elevator is the safest method of travel. More miles are traveled daily on elevators than any other form of transportation. Part of the reason for this is the ASME A17.1, American Society of Mechanical Engineers Safety Code, a detailed guide for the design and application of elevators. The elevator industry helps develop the code and conforms to it. An elevator car runs on rails inside a fireproof enclosure. This enclosure is called a hoistway, shaft, or hatch. The rails extend from the bottom to the top of the hoistway. They may be side-mounted for elevators with front or front and rear openings. On adjacent opening elevators, the rails are in opposite corners. End-mounted rails are used for special applications, such as wall climber elevators. Rails are firmly attached to the hoistway walls with clips bolted to various types of rail brackets. When aligning the rails, shims are used to overcome construction variances. Proper alignment of the rails contributes to a smooth ride. Two types of rails are used by Dover. The T-rail, named because of its T-shape, and the formed or omega rail, which is shaped like the Greek letter omega. The pit is the bottom portion of the hoistway below the lowest landing. The pit contains buffers mounted on pit channels. These buffers are designed to cushion the stop of a descending car or counterweight beyond its normal limit of travel. Spring buffers are allowed for car speeds of 200 feet per minute or less. Oil buffers are required for car speeds greater than 200 feet per minute. The sling is the main structural member of the car. The sling is made up of a horizontal crosshead, vertical styles, and a bottom member called a bolster on hydraulic elevators and safety plank on traction elevators. The floor of the car is called a platform. The platform is bolted to the sling and stabilized by brace rods front and rear. The elevator runs on rails, as previously discussed, and is guided by slide guides on low-speed elevators. Roller guides are used on high-speed elevators. The platform is enclosed by ceiling and wall panels and is called a cab or enclosure. There are two elevator classifications, passenger and freight. Passenger elevators usually have decorative cabs. Freight elevators use rugged and functional cabs called enclosures. Doors may be single panel, two panels moving at different speeds, or two panels moving in different directions. Passenger elevator car doors may be opened and closed by a motor-driven door operator mounted on top of the cab. The hall or hoistway doors are mechanically controlled by a clutch assembly mounted on the car door. With the elevator at a floor, the clutch will engage the pickup rollers on the hoistway door.
As the car door is opened by the door operator, the hoistway door is moved along with the car door. The action of the clutch engaging the pickup rollers unlocks an electromechanical interlock on the hoistway door. This interlock device prevents the hoistway doors from opening unless the car is at that floor and, once opened, prevents the car from moving away from the floor. The mechanical portion of the interlock prevents accidental opening of the hoistway doors. The electrical portion of the interlock removes power from the elevator run circuits when the lock is opened. Reopening devices mounted on the car doors are mechanical safety edges, electric eyes, and proximity edges. A17.1 Code Rule 112.4 limits the force with which doors may strike a person or object. Doors may close with no more than 30 pound-feet of torque and 7 pound-feet of kinetic energy if a reopening device is used. Or, if the controller has rendered the device inoperative, the kinetic energy may not exceed 2.5 pound-feet of force. Freight doors may be a single rising panel, double rising panels, or two panels that part at the center one rising and one lowering. Freight doors may be power operated or manually operated. Power operated freight doors require a reopening device. There are two basic types of elevators, hydraulic and traction. The hydraulic or oil-draulic, Dover's registered trademark, elevator, is normally pushed up from the bottom. The traction elevator is pulled up from above. The oil-draulic elevator uses a pumping unit for car movement. The pumping unit consists of a pump, a motor, a tank, and a valve. The pumping unit is located in a machine room adjacent to the pit or at some remote location. The pumping unit pumps oil through an oil line into a unit called the jack, which generally extends down into the ground as far as the elevator goes up. The jack contains a polished plunger which rides in the cylinder and is centered with a bearing guide. The plunger is attached to the platen plate, which is then attached to the bolster under the car. The pumping unit pumps oil into the jack to raise the elevator. As the pressure in the jack increases, the plunger is forced out of the jack, causing the car to move up the hoistway. A seal around the plunger prevents oil from escaping from the cylinder. The motor and pump are not needed to lower the car. When the lowering section of the valve is open, the weight of the car will force the plunger down. This forces the oil back to the tank through the valve. The oil hydraulic elevator is very economical for low-rise applications of eight floors or less. The weight of the elevator is supported by the jack, so the building does not need to be reinforced. The oil hydraulic elevator can descend no faster than oil can escape from the system, and any leak will provide early warning signs by frequent re-leveling. The traction elevator has steel cables called wire ropes attached to the top of the car. The ropes extend over a drive shiv or pulley, generally located in a penthouse or room above the hoistway. The traction elevator has no set limit on height and can travel at much higher speeds than the oil hydraulic elevator. After passing over the drive shiv, the ropes are attached to a balance weight called the counterweight. The counterweight consists of a frame filled with steel or iron weights. The counterweight improves traction and reduces power consumption for the elevator system. 
The ropes are made of many small wires twisted together for flexibility. These wires are wrapped around a fiber core that provides the required rope lubrication. The ropes ride in grooves in the drive shiv. With the weight of the car on one end of the ropes and the weight of the counterweight on the other end of the ropes, there will be friction or traction at the point the ropes encounter the drive shiv. Slow speed cars, 450 feet per minute or less, have the drive shiv mounted on a geared machine. The shiv is connected to the motor through a gear reduction mechanism in order to provide a mechanical advantage. High speed cars, 500 feet per minute or greater, have the drive shift connected directly to the motor. This type machine is called a gearless machine. Traction machines use a brake which is set by spring tension. When engaged, the brake must hold the car stationary with a 125% capacity load. Traction elevators may use a DC direct current motor which is easily controlled and good for both low and high speed applications. The traction elevator may also use an AC alternating current motor which is less expensive than the DC motor. Governors and safeties are used on traction and roped hydraulic elevators but are not used on non-roped hydraulic elevators. A governor is used to sense an overspeed condition of the elevator. If an overspeed condition occurs, the governor will trip an electrical switch which will cause power to be removed from the motor and the brake. This will set the brake and stop the car. If the elevator is descending and it continues to overspeed, the governor will trip a mechanical switch which will lock the governor rope attached to the safety lever and set the safeties. Safeties are mounted on the safety plank under the car and are activated by the governor. When the safeties are set, jaws will engage the rails bringing the car to a controlled stop. Safeties can only be used with T-rails. Since safeties are not required on non-roped hydraulic elevators, the less expensive Omega rails may be used on these applications. The basic operation of the elevator depends on its intended use. Constant pressure control is used where manual control of car movement is necessary. Single automatic operation accepts only one call at a time. Most passenger elevators use selective collective operation. Selective collective operation allows the elevator to bypass downhaul calls on the way up and uphaul calls on the way down making more efficient use of the elevator. The brain of the elevator is an electronic device called a controller and has many functions. Traction elevator controllers control the speed of the elevator by varying the speed of the driving motor. The hydraulic elevator controller controls the valve. The valve controls the speed of the elevator by varying the oil flow to or from the jack. The controller will make decisions using relay or electronic logic. The controller will accept, remember and cancel car and haul calls. The controller will determine car position and the call location and then send the car up or down to answer the call. The controller activates car slowdown, stopping, and door operation. Devices external to the controller provide information necessary for accurate and safe car control. Push buttons, limit switches, interlocks, and mechanical or electronic devices are used to select car direction and indicate car position. Large buildings will require banks or groups of elevators to handle the traffic demands. Dover's group systems are Computomatic, Traflomatic, and DMC, Dover Microprocessor Controlled. Many optional features are added to each basic system as required by local code or building occupancy needs. 
This multimedia presentation is introduced you to the basics of the elevator system. If you would like more detailed information, please contact your local Dover Elevator distributor or visit us on the web at www.doverelevators.com.